What is up, family, friends, loved ones, children? Welcome to TLD. Welcome to Thin Line Defense. We got Jason, Cody, Joe. Fortunately, Walsh is out again this week. Uh, I think he's running around somewhere in the country working. But uh, welcome uh, to our. Sorry, that's my phone. I'm sure you can hear that. Um, welcome to our our OG friends that are normally come out every week. Uh, if you're new here, look, Harry, right on cue, bro, brother. Every every time, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Um, welcome again. Uh, if your fans or you know, kind of follow us around from our Thin Line Defense channel. Welcome. If you're new, consider consider. Uh, I can't talk today. Slow this down. Consider subscribing to this channel and our master channel, the Thin Line Defense. But we use this channel to kind of communicate with our our friends like Harry out there, and uh, we just normally we kind of talk about our videos from the past week, and we also kind of shoot off into the breeze wherever the breeze takes us. But I think that's you know where we kind of interact with you guys the most is just chit chatting about whatever comes up, and I think that's the most fun. Fortunately for this week, we don't really have a video to talk about, so we got... We have one. We have Jason. Huh? We have Jason's video. Yeah. Sorry. I thought I was thinking about Walsh's little teaser. Mm -mm. But but that'll give us, you know, an opportunity to chit-chat for at least uh, almost an hour, so... Yep. That's a good segue. Let's... We'll talk about what Jason did this week. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so we looked at that uh, Blackhound Genesis, the 6 to 24 by 50. And it was a really, I was talking to the guys beforehand. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. I'm laughing. I'm laughing at Joe. (laughs) Um, So it was a really tough record for me just because I, I think I had my sights set. To, to try to film the way that Walsh would. Uh, seeing his optic reviews, I like his layout and how he did things. And I thought I was going to try to go my own way, and I just I, – honestly, I didn't like it. It was a tough record for me. And using that side shot camera thing, uh, it was it was hard. So uh, I feel bad because I didn't think that I did uh, I did that scope justice in that video. I really did like it, but it just wasn't something that was really for me because I'm not really shooting out the distance. Like looking through it and seeing how, if I was a distance shooter, I liked it. I liked the the reticle design. And in fact, you know what I'll do is I'll pull up, <clears throat> I'll pull up a picture of the reticle so you kind of see because it. I didn't think it came out very good on the video. Yeah, do but you, I think uh, that's. Do you still right. have it mounted? Yeah, I still have it mounted. So I think I might be able to persuade you and turn you to the dark side of higher magnification, even when you're only shooting out to two or 300 yards. Think so? Yeah, I think I can. I think if you put like, I don't know, draw a deer on a piece of cardboard or put out a deer, you know, they have just the regular targets that have like the deer with the heart and the lungs and all that stuff. Yeah. I want you to put that out at 300 and then pick up whatever rifle that you have like a three by nine on it and look and aim at where you would aim. And then I want you to grab the other rifle that completely magnified in or zoomed in and look at the same target. I bet okay. you we could convert you. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm, all my me, stuff I'm not is lying in... when I say that I shoot at 34 power when I'm, when I'm shooting for accuracy at a hundred yards, I'm zoomed in at 34 power. Yeah, I get that. I just don't – so my my gun, the gun that I was mounted on is a – it's a Wildcat cartridge that I put together. So there's um, – it's a 6x45. No one makes ammo for it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's probably max distance is 300 yards, but all of the deer that I've shot with it is going to be within within 100 yards. You know, it's, it's definitely a truck gun style. It has – it's a shorter barrel. It has a SBA uh, brace on it. Um. I just didn't think that even at six six x, uh, that's usually pretty good for me. Yeah. But maybe maybe I'm I'm old school, man. I mean, the I have a I have another six to twenty four power, um, 
I just, I, man, I never use it. And then this Blackhound one came in and it's, it's great. The, the uh, glass clarity is a lot better than the other one that I had. Um, I really do like it. I like the reticle. I don't know if the, if this is coming up on here. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I like the reticle design, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can convince me, man. It just really yeah. wasn't, wasn't for me. Yeah. I think if you, if you go out and try to do accuracy shooting, so put it on, put it on something that has a longer barrel. I don't even care if you're five, five, six, mm -hmm. just put it on a longer barrel and actually try to shoot for groups. Yeah. At, you know, I do my groups at a hundred yards, but to, to prove this point, put it at 200, put it at 300. And with your three by nine, you can barely see, you know, a small dot. I'm talking like yeah. a small dot that you're trying to shoot at. It's kind of right. like the red dot on an MOA, right? Uh, like a three MOA red dot. When you put it on a target at 300 yards, it, it almost covers the entire target. So you yeah. don't really know where you're going to hit. You, you're hoping you're going to hit the target, but the red dot, the dot is covering the whole thing. And with the more magnification, you can really zoom in and really look at where you're trying to shoot at. And see, so typically when I'm out, I have, uh, I'll have my three by nine and then I'll have a separate spotting scope. That's like a 60 power. Yeah. And so to me, I, I don't like, if I'm not hunting, I don't want to be lugging around that giant optic. It's, it's huge. I would rather have like an LPVO style or size optic on my gun. I get it. And where you're hunting at and where I hunt yeah, that's true. is is drastically different. So you're hunting in Washington. And if anybody hunted on either of the coasts, East Coast or West, I never have. But I've been stomping around the woods in the East Coast. And I'm with you. I don't, I don't think I would have a 26 power scope on the East Coast. Because you can't see past 20 feet into the woods. Yeah. And same and, with and, Washington. Washington, super thick. Yeah, we had so we went out to the there's a actual rainforest and the Olympic National Rainforest, and the west side of it is Forks, Washington, which is where that whole um, that freaking vampire like chick flick movie came from. Where I the name of it. Wait, what? Oh, uh, Werewolves and Fire. Yeah, yeah, Twilight. Twilight. So. I don't know what that is, Cody. I don't. I can't see it. Hey, misfit. Oh, <laughs> hearts. What's up, buddy? I was trying not to interrupt, but it, oh, it, go it, go ahead, man. So, it. anyways, everyone that we talked to, <laughs> everyone that we talked to, uh, in Forks, they pointed us to a certain uh, area, and we found some really good uh, elk that was out there. Yeah. But. Dude, uh, that was a, I can't remember if I shared this story before. So my hunting buddy and I, as we, we were going out scouting, the weekend that we went out scouting, as we were walking back through the through the woods, no joke, man, I'm like, you, know, you just kind of get in a zone when you're rucking. So, and we were just out for a day. So I didn't have a heavy pack or anything, but I was, I was behind my buddy. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, no joke, man, there was this girl in running gear, like, in the middle of the woods running opposite of us. So she was come, running from the direction that we were headed. We were headed back to my buddy's truck and I wasn't, I wasn't the first guy. I was second. So it just kind of took me by surprise. And then I asked my buddy, Paul, go, dude, did I, I didn't even hear her coming. I didn't see her at all. Did you see her? And he was like, dude, it was like, she just popped out of nowhere and just jogged on by morning. It was bizarre. Like that's how thick it was out there that, yeah, I doubt that she popped out of nowhere, but it was so thick out there that it, it almost seemed like that. Yeah. So I, I, I just don't want to go out and shoot uh, an optic and zero in an optic that I would not use no, I for its it. intended purpose. If you come, if you come down to Colorado and go to like the range I go to, or if you tried to go hunting down here, you would have to have more because would you? the grass is tall, right? Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't think that like an antelope is very well camouflaged. It actually is. Um, but when you're trying to see stuff, brown stuff in brown grass and three, four, 500 yards, yeah. you got to have something, you know, you can catch the movement, 
uh, just looking out at a field. But then when you look through an optic, you want to be able to see what you're shooting at clearly. Right. Because all you're doing is, is seeing movement. And that's, you know, that's, it's not uncommon, especially when I'm up in Idaho, when we were at Mountain Home, Jason, um, to go out and shoot varmin and stuff like yeah. coyotes, rabbits, you know, whatever varmin, uh, badgers. It, it wasn't uncommon for us to be shooting at 600 yards at, you know, rock chucks, which are pretty much groundhogs Yeah. at 600 yards. Okay. And I had a three by nine then. And that's why I love my, my higher power optics now. That, so, yeah, you know, I get it. If you're, point. if you're shooting at a hundred yards, if you try to shoot at a hundred yards in, in the lower Rocky mountains, you'll, you'll never hit, you'll never get anything. You'll never get that close to, I can't say never. It's rare that you get that close to animal. Actually, a lot of people when they hunt, they shoot from wood, one ridge to the other ridge. Like they shoot across the valley well, because you'll see the elk or the deer on the other mountain across, you know, yeah. big, big Canyon, maybe a river down there. And you're looking across and across to only a four or 500 yard shot, you know, directly across, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So even at 24 power, you're thinking not, not good enough. Uh, for what I'm doing with the six millimeter arc. No, yeah. I'm trying to go out to a thousand, hmm. you know? And I mean, I, like I said, I, I use it at 34 at a hundred yards. Cause I don't have to see past what I'm looking at. I don't need peripheral vision when I'm shooting at an orange dot on a target. It right. takes me a second for target acquisition because when you're zoomed in that far, it's it. Okay. Let me look down at the ground. This is my target. Let me look left. Oh yeah. There is a target left. That's Sean's. That means this is my target. Like it takes me a second to get target acquisition at a hundred yards, but I'm just killing paper. So I don't care. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, all in all, it's, it was tough because I did, I like the optic. I like the black Hound guys. I mean, their business model is awesome. We, I loved having them on and talking to them. And so it's not a knock on, on them at all or a knock on the product. It's just not for me. Yeah. And to be fair, we asked for that one because of the six millimeter arc build. Yeah. Anybody watching this right now, they make a, a bunch of different, optics i don't know if they have anything beyond that uh 24 power though not beyond but they definitely have stuff more for your liking for oh your yeah 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 and in fact i have a uh, i have one of their lpvo's the one to four power that i think the one to four power is the one that's supposed to have the daytime bright mm -hmm. um so that's gonna which is that's kind of right up my alley even a lpvo is something i would use a, on a uh, hunting gun probably not a four power but a one to eight i would yeah. So, yep. I, heck, my, my uncle, man, just uh, like towards the end of deer season out here, he had his uh, uh, Sig Romeo 5 on his truck gun, and he was driving out of his farm, and he sees a deer, and so he's just like, I wonder if I can get my gun out and shoot that thing before it takes off, and he did. He got his deer for the season. Nice. Using a, you, mean, his, you mean got a gun, ran 300 yards away from a paved road, uh, and then took the shot, right? Oh, this is, this is on his farm. This is on his farm. Okay, his property. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he was good. Misfit. Uh, I'll have to double check, Misfit, but yeah, I think I did. What? The one to four power. So, Misfit asked, did you all get the Black Hound one to four? Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's in a box in the garage. It's going to be the next optic that I review. That would be better for you. Yeah, I, I, I've but I'm glad you did bit. the unboxing and everything, so I don't have to do any of that with this, <laughs> the Black Hound scope. I just got to go put it on the rifle and try it, and then determine which one I'm going to try to put a six millimeter arc round through. Misfit has a comment for you, Joe. He says, "Smart man with the straw." Yeah, I told you I'm going to do it, man. It fits. <laughs> the, the straw fits through the slits too. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Casey Jones thought about that when he designed right? that. That's exactly Positive. why positive thinking man hey but i mean this this brings up a good point about our channel so we all have different styles we all have likes and dislikes about so you know Braden does a lot of the optics reviews but we live in nebraska which on the the east side of nebraska is really flat and not very densely uh wooded or anything like that we got pockets of trees and corn and stuff like that but 
any hunting we're going to do out here, you can be able to reach out and see uh, quite a ways. And then, you know, obviously, you know, Joe lives in a flatter area with, you know, he can get in the mountains and, but it's not densely wooded. Uh, yeah. And Jason lives in a very dense area. So we all have different tastes on, you know, what kind of optics we like. So I, I think that yeah. brings value to what we're trying to do here in the channel is, uh, bring different options and different mindsets uh, to our reviews. So there may be people out there like Jason that don't have a need for, uh, you know, an optic that reaches out, to, you know, 24 power. So, but I think it's still valuable that you put out a video and you, you give your opinion on it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, shoot. Well, Cause I have the Rocky Mountain to the west and then the mm -hmm. open nothingness plains to the east. Yeah. Yep. But even if I go into the mountains, you can see over 100 yards into the woods. It's not – the mountains have a lot of pine trees, but it's elevation pine trees, so they don't grow that that close together. I mean, heck, you can walk out my front door and see the tree line where it's above an elevation where trees won't grow. Yep. Yes, it says mission dictates everything. Yep. Yeah, and I think we. I think you said the same comment our last chat, Misfit. Absolutely true. Yeah, that should be Way TLD's to motto. <laughs> <laughs> Try to come up with something but, original, Misfit. Yeah, but that kind of <laughs> even gives, though you're right. You know, that kind of gives our viewers uh, kind of an idea. Like, so okay, I live on the west coast or east coast. Maybe I should, you know, use Jason's opinions on optics a little more than Cody's, who doesn't know anything about anything but you know similar thing you know somebody may live in the, the rocky mountains or the smoky mountains and you know joe's opinion may you know be more you know pertinent to them so i like i like that we all have different opinions yeah yeah and i like that we can we can all look at one piece of kit and come up with different pros and cons and come up with reasons why we do or don't like it or if we're going to use it it's just yeah. so we're trying to keep it real. Um, we're just average everyday people, and these are yeah. our thoughts about it. So uh, Joe Misfit asked, "Where's Walsh?" So we uh, we were trying to find a a nice way of, of putting this, but Walsh had dozens of unpaid parking tickets, and so he actually has a warrant out for his arrest right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and okay, he doesn't I use a VPN. Don't know. He doesn't use <laughs> yeah, a VPN, VPN, so we're gonna come right back to his house. Um, <laughs> I don't know where Maybe. he's at. I think he was he was doing something like an anniversary with his wife or something. That was last week. That you know, was last day. Week. This week he's TDY or something like that. Or oh, yeah. okay. Weird because every time I went TDY, I was there. I would just have my camera off sitting in my hotel room. I think I did that like five times. Four no times comment. No we comment. Started this. Just saying. Yeah, just Walsh. Saying. It's nine thirty on the East Coast. He ain't still working. So we had this, I went to this undercover training down in Florida one time and at the end of the, the course, it was two week course. We had a, a sit down dinner with all the classmates and this one dude from Ohio, he had a beard that was, he just looked like his easy top. I mean, he looked like a rough guy. So we get into this place and lady goes, you know, you know, you guys celebrating something? And we said, yeah. And I pointed to the dude and I was like, yeah, Jim just got out of prison. And she was... <laughs> Oh, what for? And he goes, well, they, the claim was felony assault, but I didn't think I did. You know, I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> That's Have a little bit of fun. Yep. Have Who knows where he's at? He's probably not watching this. Probably not. I, I'm sure he misses everyone, and he'll have lots him. of stories when he comes back. I haven't seen him, uh, you know, throw a comment in there or anything. Maybe it's on Facebook. Who knows? Mm. He could comment from Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the yeah. the uh, Blackhound, the uh, Genesis uh, six to twenty four, again, great great glass, uh, a lot of cool features. There was some some issues that I think you guys saw, like turrets weren't really clicking, and but the guys, when I remembered when we talked about it during the live chat, I think it was one that didn't pass their QA because. There was something that was off with it. Like one of those was a, optic. Yeah, it was in the glass. Like a speck okay. or something. I honestly didn't see anything wrong with the glass. 
That's what he said. He said that it looking through the glass, you wouldn't be able to see it. I think he okay. said if you looked at the front of it, you might see like a dot. You know okay. how it has that mirrored finish on the yep. front of the glass? Yep. It might have like a dot or a tiny imperfection, okay. what he was saying. But he said that you couldn't see it through the glass. Which is good because I'm I'm gonna be honest, I'm I'm gonna weigh the pros and cons. I mean clear glass and clear glass, that's great. But that's not the only thing that I'm looking for in a scope. So if the turrets aren't clicking and I like 34 power better, that that black hound might get shot. I'm going to be 100% honest with it and say, <laughs> okay, which one do I want to leave on the six millimeter arc? Yeah. And whichever one it, it is, I'm going to get mounted back up and the other one's going to get shot. We talked I about knew. that last week too, about ha- trying to shoot it right through the glass. Yeah. I really want to see you try to do that. I'm so not Misfit, that good of a shot, but I'll try. I didn't read this one. Uh, Misfit says he's in the doghouse from buying too much kit. LOL. True. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. he gets away with it. I mean, the UPS and FedEx guys know him by, you know. They have to know him. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. So, so because we don't have much else to talk about in our video, I say that we come up with a different topic. We've we've been kind of stuck on optics for a couple live chats now. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, so I say we come up with different. Oh, do you know what? Let's get Let's get the controversy started. Let's start talking about calibers. Now, now, if we all have different which one's, opinion on calibers, which one's right? best? Yeah, I mean, let's start off with pistols. So, if you could only have one, one gun, one pistol, what oh, would man. it be chambered in? Here we go. Nine mil. Cody, I agree. Yeah, because I'm I can still the... get. I still have my PCC right. So with my my pistol. I still have my, you know, my PCC. They're nine mil all day. Yeah, I think at that point with the way that all the ammo going and stuff, I would stay nine mil also. This was says nine believe, mil for the win. Yeah, I still believe full heartedly in forty five. <laughs> um, unless you're trying to shoot through something, if you're just shooting a soft, squishy median at, you know, within twenty five yards, forty five is a devastating round. But you try to shoot through a windshield with 45, and I don't have any confidence it will actually go through the windshield. Yeah. I Just think for the last what PCC are you using, Cody? So I got the Ruger PCC 9, the, the takedown. That's yeah, a cool gun. The one you yeah. see in the intro where I'm running up, it's that one. I think Cody only took five steps in that video and went out of breath. Probably. <laughs> Harry it's says so, nine do the mag capacity usually. Yeah. Or that's a or good 22. point too. <laughs> or twenty-two. It's only twenty-two, but I got fifty rounds in this. So, I don't know. I, I have mean, a twenty two pistol and they're ten round mags. My hmm. SIG and yeah, my Ruger. Yeah. I mean that's if if someone was like you can only take one round with you and as much ammo as you can carry, I'd probably say twenty two. Yeah. I'd probably take my 10 I mean, 20. I, yeah. yeah, I could take way more ammunition in that. True. Misfit that says, way. I have a PC charger. It's so much fun. I love Rub it. I would, in, Misfit. Rub it in. That's the problem, <laughs> yeah. Misfit, is I bought that the second those came out. Because, I, you know, we all have, we all like the 1022 takedown. So the second that the PCC came out, takedown, I'm like, I want it. I bought it. And then, like, a month later, they came out with the charger. They came out with the, all the different... All the different stuff, and I'm I'm yep. sad, but yep. I still like my my PCC. I actually got the uh, Midwest Industries uh, fork handguard, and it looks it still looks pretty sweet to me. But the charger is awesome. I, I really like that thing. If I had a million dollars, I'd buy one tomorrow, but I don't. Misfits asking, do you all have recommendations for suppressors? That'd be Jason territory. Yeah. <laughs> so I. Am I the only one that has a suppressor out of the group? I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to hand the ATF for my Fourth Amendment, dude. So the uh, the interesting thing that you can do, I, you know, you guys know Justin Buker. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I know the name. So he he was a he might still have his FFL, mm-hmm. but you can put down like the time that because it's not ATF gun uh, like gun toting agents that come to inspect. It's mm-hmm. some 
some pencil pusher. Uh -huh. So they put down what time would you be available? Like you, you give them dates and days and times that you're available. And he always would, he would always put Saturday between 12 and one, 12, yeah. you know, noon and 1 PM. Yeah. And of course they're not working Saturday. So they would always call and they say, Hey, that doesn't work for me. What date can I come by? And he would say, well, you know, Tuesday after nine. I see what you're saying though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, right now, if somebody knocks on my door and says, Hey, we want to inspect this. I'm going to say cute story. Do you have a warrant? Because I appreciate and love my fourth amendment. So without it, you're not coming through my door. But when you sign that dotted line, for the suppressor, you sign that away. Yeah. They can come in and inspect the, what it is, where it's being held, and they can write you up for it. So, I don't know. I, I like the idea of a suppressor. I just, that's what, that and the the pain of getting one. The nine yeah. month to a Maybe, year wait, the two hundred dollars tax stamp. I think it was 13 months from the time I got mine to the time I actually had it in hand. So, Misfit, I... I'm kind of spoiled. I had a, a buddy that was looking to become a suppressor dealer. And so I, uh, I was able to get mine. I have a silencer co octane nine, which is good for nine mil and 300 blackout. And I got it at dealer cost. So my cost plus the tax stamp was cheaper than what it typically MSRP is for that. And I love that thing. Um, a buddy of mine has a octane 45 and he uses it on his 45, his nine, his, Two two three, I think. Um, I've heard some some really good. The newer models, like the newer versions, I haven't tested them out yet. Um, like the Octane Nine Two has uh, better sound suppression. It's just, it just seems like a better all around. But honestly, I just have the one. I would look at Griffin. Uh, Griffin makes some good ones. Uh, I really. I really would want to get an OSS. I think their design is really cool, but the price is kind of ridiculous. Prices on suppressors are just crazy. If you uh, if you have the money and you don't you don't mind paying the tax stamp and signing all that paperwork and waiting, I would just say just get one because they're fun to fun to use. But um, if you don't care about that, you don't care about shooting suppressed, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Misfit says charger such a tiny package when broken down. So it's a charger takedown. Yeah, so you can get the charge. It's basically the same, the same receiver, right? Yeah, and it's still the takedown. Stock, but it's got shorter a barrel, way it's smaller pistol. barrel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Way, I mean, it's pistol, but it's way smaller barrel, way smaller handguard, and then you can get the stock on the back is just a pick and tinny, so you can pop it right off. Yeah. Kind of yeah, like, so I think it's a yeah, so like that. the other question he had, Joey says, can they do the same thing with an SBR? From from my understanding, yeah, it's the same paperwork that you fill out, um, and you're basically, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're basically saying that they can come in and inspect it. Yeah, and their whole kind of rule behind it, like if you have to have it in a safe that only you, only the person that applied for the application has access to. So like you can't you can't just have it in a gun safe with all your other guns if you want your anybody in your family to be able to get into that safe. Yeah. I mean this is technically right. This is what mm -hmm. the law says what you're supposed to do. So you can only have access to it. You have to pay two hundred dollars for either of them. Anything with a tax stamp. You have to wait the nine to fifteen months depending on how fast the government moving. And then yeah, if they want, they have the right to inspect it. And what Jason was saying, that's a nicety. Like putting when you're available a nicety, they can show up at any time and request to inspect it. And if you yeah. don't have it on you, you're going to jail. Like, well, and that's a, so the thing is, it. like, if they if they show up on a Wednesday and I'm at I'm at work, right? I'm on the other side of the state or something, working. I'm not going to get in trouble for that because I, no. you know, hey, you didn't tell me I wasn't there. Um, there's some there's some loopholes behind it. The one thing that I would recommend, if, if you were to go that route, is um, create a trust and have the trust be the owner of the suppressor. That way you can get, now you have to check your state your state rules on this because Washington is a little different. Um, uh, but like in Washington state, if let's say I wanted Cody and Joe on my trust, they would each have to do uh, a separate background check and the state would basically have to sign off on them being on the trust. And then any suppressor or SBR 
that is on the trust any of us could use. Like right now I have an individual tax stamp. So only I technically I'm the only one that is supposed to be using that. Even if I were to go out to the range with a buddy and have him shoot my gun with the suppressor, that's kind of like a gray area. Like the ATF hasn't came up with clear guidance on is that allowed or not. So just check uh, the state state rules on your suppressor is more important in my mind the the federal side it's not going to change it's pretty much the same you're going to have to if you ever take it out to go shooting have a copy of your tax stamp with you because sometimes you'll get some crazy range officer that wants to see your tax stamp make sure you're all legal uh, and if you don't i mean they could kick you out of the the right. They don't have legal and, authority and, to require it, but they no. do have legal authority to deny service to you at the gun range. So Misfit asked Joe, he says, what condition do you keep your home defense weapon, round chambered, safety on or off, in the safe, next to the bed, question mark, you know, a bunch of questions. So that's the question. Great How do you keep question. your home defense weapon? Do you have round chambered? Do you have the safety on or off? Do you keep it in a safe? Do you keep it next so, to your bed? So it completely depends on where I have it stored. And I have, I don't have little kids running around my house. So I have multiple guns all the time. Um, so recently I haven't been, if I have my uh, AR pistols, right. Then I won't chamber one. I'll just put the magazine in and I'll, I'll put it in the gun. I'll just leave it in Amber status and not chamber. Um, if I'm sleeping and the gun is in the bed with me, cause that does happen. Uh, then I don't have one in the chamber because I'm worried about, you know, accidentally cooking off around at night or whatever. If it's on the nightstand or the dresser, which I always have one closer to me than that, but I'll have another gun on the nightstand or the dresser, that will more than likely 90% of the time have a round in the chamber. But mm -hmm. I've trained that every time, every time when I'm not thinking about it, I grab a pistol and I rack it. Uh, that, that comes from being overseas. I always slept with my pistol underneath my pillow. Um, Cause Cody, you remember those sleeping conditions where we had yeah. local, lo local national cleaning the compound with no escorts. Um, yeah. The same people that I had just seen in the village the day before, you know? So yeah. I went slept one with my gun underneath my pillow, but I never had one chambered. So my instant reaction and just to slap and rack. Um, and then present toward the threat. So, so Harry asked, do you keep the bolt back on your AR? I'm no. guessing your AR, yeah. No, I don't. It, it only takes half a second to to chamber that. If, if I'm going for the AR, that's not right next to my bed. That's normally behind a door or something like that. Um, so if I'm going for that instead of my pistol, I have the half a second. If I don't, then my pistol under my pillow so I'm just using that. But no, I don't put the bolt to the rear because they are notorious. You, you bump it on the ground and the bolt slam forward anyway. And it can compress your your uh, spring to where your spring doesn't have the, the your bolt spring or your buffer spring. It doesn't have the same oomph or the same spring retention, I guess you could call it. So no, I always store everything in the relaxed position. So I'll clear my weapons, uh, you know, do the look finger look away look again bolt forward yeah. on fire pull the trigger and then i put the magazine in and just slam it in and i try not to run my magazines that are going to be sitting around the house for a while i try not to run them full so i have like 29 mil rounds in my ar9 um and if i can't get it if i can't defend my house with 20 rounds then something's wrong <laughs> and i have three backup gun laying around You'll yeah. see when, when my flag video comes out. I have my 1911 by my front door, too. So, so what about you, Cody? Same, same questions. So in my bedroom, I have one of those little picture frames that you lift up. It's got my Glock 19, Olight uh, weapons light in, uh, mounted on there, extra magazine. That's going to give me time to get... So I got a, another bedroom up here that has my like my gun cabinet in there. I don't have a gun safe yet. Well, we have one gun safe, but I'll tell you where that's at in a second. Um, so if you come to my house looking for that, just know it you're not going to like what you're going to see behind the door. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I got my Glock 
gets me to the gun cabinet where I got my big boy toys. And we also have a gun safe downstairs right by the door that has the PC, the PCC shotguns, 1022s, and a, all like a bunch of pistols. Uh, so, you know, the, the whole point of the Glock up in the bedroom is to get down to that stuff if, if we need to. But it, like I said, it has a weapons light on it and an extra magazine. And that's ready to rock at all times. Uh, probably once a month, I go in there and check the light, uh, and I kind of pull all the put all the uh, ammo out of it, kind of shift it around, and I load it back up. Yeah, I try to grab another magazine and load it in a different mag. Yeah, I probably should do that, but I've never had any issues with Glock mags doing anything crazy. But uh-uh. you're right; I should probably rotate them out. I got some extra ones just sitting around. So, Jason, so I'm a uh... I'm kind of similar. I, I do keep my, my guns hot. They're chambered, but I have, uh, I'm kind of concealed throughout the house and I'm kind of different. So I have, I have basically two sets of kids. I have my teenage set and then I have the babies. So the teenage sets, they've gone out shooting with me they know how to handle guns. I'm very confident that they're not going to just pick one up and show their friends, you know, what's in dad's uh, dress drawer or something like that. So the other thing is concealment furniture is something that's big for me. So the one that's in my bedroom, my nightstand is one that I turned into a concealed furniture. So I have a false bottom on there and I keep my, my Glock uh, in there chambered with two extra mags ready to go. And pretty much in the main areas of the house, there is a loaded chambered gun. It's, it, I can pull it out. Anyone can grab it, and all the adults or the older kids know where they are. Anyone can grab it and just start going to town. No safety on my Glocks, nothing to, to worry about there. And we do have a safe where I could get to the uh, bigger guns if I needed to. But I should have a my, – my thought is, you know, if, if there was – if someone was trying to rob the house or come in and, and cause harm to the family – with the pistols that are situated throughout the house should be fine. Yeah. I should, I should have been more concise with my answer. If I, I normally have a pistol under my pillow, a pistol on the dresser and a AR pistol behind the door. Pistol under my pillow is an Amber pistol on the dresser is in red. The AR behind the door is an Amber. And then whenever I'm, I can't show the whole thing, but whenever I'm in my house, I always have something on me. It's if I tell people can people give me heck like you always have a gun. If you have pants on, I have a gun. <laughs> that that's my answer. If you have your wallet, then I have a gun. You know, if you have pants on and a shirt on, then I have a gun. If I'm, you know, swimming uh or taking a shower, obviously not, but any other time I have a weapon on me. So Harry's saying he's afraid of, you know, keeping his guns out on, on counters or, you know, top of uh, dressers or anything like that. And that's a good point. And actually, that's For something that Jason, it just, yeah, people coming in the house and using them, you know. Yes, I would right? agree. I would agree yeah. if it depends where they are. If you have a pistol in a spare bedroom, then absolutely not. Don't do that. <laughs> But if you have a pistol underneath something on your dresser in your bedroom, they do not have time to rifle through the top of your dresser and find your pistol. They, they don't have time for it. Yeah. And like Jason said, I'm getting into the concealment furniture like Jason and Cody already mentioned. Cody has the picture frame. Jason is getting something for his video. And I already have the flag that I told you guys about, the Liberty concealment flag. Um, and I love that thing. Because you can break into it, but it's hiding in plain sight. If if somebody breaks into the house, they're looking for the threats like you, right? They're not looking behind a picture of 10 picture on the, this table. They're not looking behind this, this specific picture. So not in plain view, obscured but some way, but. So he also said, Harry says, me too, even with no pants, don't ask. <laughs> so he, he must use his prison wallet a lot. Yeah. Easter. <laughs> Easter. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he was talking about an intruder. So I, I 
Uh, Misfit says, concealment furniture is a great idea. Let's see if I can talk my wife into it. Well, we're going to put out a video you can show her. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's coming soon. Um, yeah. And before it comes out, go to Liberty Home Concealment and code TLD. We'll save you 15% off of their stuff. And I'm telling you right now, the flag that I have, it's the colored American flag. And then it turns into the don't tread on me flag is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely yeah, it was like really good. And I bought the three compartment. So it has a big compartment on the bottom that folds out. The top union folds up and then, or the top stripes fold up and the union folds out. So three compartments. I'm putting the links in our uh, chat right now. Awesome. And the code was TLD, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 15%. I was able to talk them into 15%. But Harry, that, I mean, like I, like Joe was saying, that little picture frame I bought, or actually, I was, uh, my wife got it for me as a gift. She went on Etsy and just typed in picture concealment frame or something like that. Yeah, and yours They're, is super simple. Anybody can make yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You don't have There's, to build a box frame. It has normal hidden hinges, just normal like jewelry box hinges, and then you have two magnets on the top of it that just the yep. the top of the slide go to that magnet. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, she bought it. It's got nice little, you know, uh, screws that dr you drill in that can go into the wall. I I haven't had any issues with. It. Actually, sometimes I forget that it's there I, and, until I'm like, oh, I need to go check on it, make sure the light's working and all that. But so there's a and, video. Sorry, sorry, Cody. No, I was gonna say that you, know, you can get them in any size, all the way up to. You know, big old flags like Joe has. But yeah, I plan eventually to put a bigger gun up over the door. But I got toddlers right now, so I'm not I'm not trying to have any kind of drama with that yet. So yeah, I, we're gonna have I to got start with uh, stuff. one of the guys that I work with. I'm gonna try to get y'all. I don't know if he's gonna make them for the masses or what, but one of the guys that I work with, he likes messing around carpentry stuff, and I've been trying to get him to make me a flag for year for over a year now. And I finally went through Liberty Home Concealment and bought mine. Um, and right after I bought it, I didn't tell him. And he's like, hey, man, I finally bought all the stuff to make you your flag. And I'm like, bro, I just bought one. His name's Joe, too. That's why he's so cool. Um, but I was like, dude, I just bought one. So he's like, well, I'm going to make it anyway. I'm like, cool, I can only use another one. And then I got a wild idea. And I'm like, hey, man, can you turn it into a coffee table? So, yeah. so now, now I might have a coffee table in the living room that I can put, you know, in a full size AR in. Yeah. So I, I dropped a link in the comments. Uh, there was a video that I found years ago, uh, how to make your own stealth shelf. So basically, if you've seen those tactical walls, the floating shelves that have the the compartment that drops down. Mm -hmm. So this guy goes through, and it, the one that he makes is it's only big enough to hold a pistol. And a couple mags, but I want to say, I mean, this was five years ago, so lumber prices have gone up, but I want to say he spent like 30 or 40 bucks to make the shelf. And you're talking maybe a hundred bucks to, if you have some carpentry skills and you have some tools, you could probably do it for pretty cheap. Yeah. So, and the only thing that I'll say about that, I have my flag by the front door and what I went through in my mind was, okay, if I go to answer the door and somebody trying to force their way in, I can just use my foot on a wedge reach mm -hmm. up, grab my gun out of that flag and go for it. But I'll tell you what, today, today was an eye opener for, for a couple different reasons. So I'm in the kitchen, I'm heating something up in the microwave. My wife, all my daughter are grown. One of my daughters are over. They're all sitting, you know, the TV went on, the microwave went going. There was some noise in the house. And for my wife calls it her alarm system. Um, we take a baby gate and when we're not blocking the dogs off, we lean it up against the front door. So if the front door open, it falls on the tile and it makes a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the microwave and my dog barks and that gate hits the tile. And right away, my, my stomach's up in my throat. I, I clear my holster. I'm in the low ready. I poke my head around the corner, you know, keeping my distance from the wall and everything. And it's my, my youngest daughter has used her key to come in the house and we didn't hear it because the microwave and everything was going. If, if that would have been an intruder, somebody forgot to lock the door or whatever, that flag is now way too far away from me to be able to get to it. That person in my house, luckily I have a Belgian Malinois that will help me out. Give me at least a couple seconds, but yeah, I had mine on my hip and 
I was in the low ready and I told my daughter, you got to let somebody know that you're coming over. <laughs> she, she, she was apologetic. I, my PTSD kicked in. And That's funny because it was weird for a couple minutes. <laughs> Janelle, Janelle regularly asks, like, why are you carrying in the house? Because I carry yeah. all the time. And when, when the family got, they, they usually, most of the time on Thursday nights, Janelle will take the kids, all the kids, and they'll go ice skating. And so I, every Thursday night, I spend clearing my house. I know it's empty, and I just practice. How would I, you know, it's nice. All of our bedrooms are upstairs. Like, I've gone through this in my head. If someone were to come in, I have plenty of guns upstairs. Like, I can I can hold the stairwell. The yep. family can hold the stairwell, and we're, we're good to go. Yep. Hey, Until they decide more, to burn I, you out. I see Misfits yeah. got more, more questions, but. One more That's thing great. about the concealment uh, stuff. I, you know, I talk a lot about the dragon mount stuff, and I know I only have the desktop mounts that he makes, but he does make wall mounts. And if you look at his website and some of the videos he has, people will mount those like in a closet. Say, like for instance, I have a at my front door, I have a little coat closet. You can easily mount one of those wall mounts back there with yep. your AR and a couple magazines. And yep. You got what you need right behind your your coats. Yeah, so hey, that, that's another right now, thing. Great idea for you, Cody. Right now, buying the canvases, like the canvas painting, is all the rage yeah. right now, right? So yeah. mount it on the wall, and then literally just hang a canvas over top of it. Right. And if something goes bump in the night, you just have to pull the canvas down real quick, and there's your whatever, yeah. your pistol, yeah. your Steve, AR, your. What, Steve what's mentioned his he website, would. Cody? Can I type in this thing or no? You should be able to post a comment. Anyway, it's uh I was gonna pull it up and, and try to show everyone. It's www.dragonmounts.com. And he, he mentioned that he doesn't have an affiliate or you know uh discount codes or anything, but he did mention that he has military and law enforcement discounts, and he would also give TLD members a discount if you just send them an email, say hey. TLD sent me. He'll hook you up. It yeah. Looks like it's down right now. There's, there's. It's giving me an error saying they'll be back up in a few minutes. Yeah. Oh. So this is a small business. You got, you got to deal with that stuff when you're going through yeah. it. And he might, he 3D prints them, so it might take right. a little bit for him to get you your order. But you're supporting a small business, and you're hanging guns on the wall. Yeah. Like, if anybody doesn't didn't... know, my my daughter, Mile High Angel, she. She's big in the gun community and does a whole bunch of stuff. And she worked with Faxon and actually designed a Mother's Day pistol for Faxon. Yes. And Faxon took the design, sent it to Sarah Coder, and uh, they made they made four of them. They made one for my daughter to have, one for a giveaway. No, three. One for my daughter to have, one, one for a giveaway, and one for Faxon themselves. And I was devastated that I didn't win the giveaway. I, I had my daughter contact Faxon and say, hey, uh, offer the winner of the giveaway a cash price. I'll, I'll pay him two grand for that pistol. I don't care what it is. I want my daughter designed pistol. And um, Faxon, out of the graces of their heart, they decided to send it to my daughter to give it to me. So they gave up their copy of it. And that sucker is hanging on my living room wall. Like not, yeah, awesome. not concealed. Not anything. It's up high where the little one, when they come over, they can't get to it. But it is literally wall art on my wall and my. But is it is it loaded? Like do you have that ambered? No, nope, no. I won't use that for. I I still haven't shot it. I don't know if I'll ever put around. I thought about putting one round. It's on a it's on a shelf like Cody has yeah. uh, back before we knew about dragon mounts. So I had uh, Sean from We Like Shooting print me up one. And it's on that, and it has a little shelf on it. And uh, I thought about shooting one one round through it, and then putting that spent casing on the shelf. But yeah, no, that's not that, a home defense that, gun. That's one thing to consider about these that as a mounting option. Obviously, uh, it uses the magazine well, so you won't be able to have it in you know amber or red condition. But uh, dark. I mean, I'm, I think he makes other mounts where it won't use the magazine well uh we can obviously look at the website later and verify yeah. that but that's something to consider but it's also the most concealed you can get is behind a bunch of coats just hanging there yeah. yep. but I, I think from seeing his website before i want to say that there was some that had like a little shelf where you keep your magazine so it's 
guns coming off, magazines with you, you could be ready to yeah. go and just. Yeah, it was built into it. So the magazine comes oh, that's right. right into the yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I put this up a couple times. So Misfit says, I was LARPing around earlier and was working on where my QD attachment is. Where do you run it on your rail? That's going to depend on your, your sling. Yeah, on, yeah. on your sling and your setup. Uh, on my AR that I run the sling on, on the rail, it's all the way up front. I have mm -hmm. been running it on the the back. You know the little QD mount that you can buy? I don't know the nomenclature, man. The, yeah, that, yeah. the butt plate, you know, yeah. right on the back of the receiver that keeps the... That's the end plate. Okay, the end plate. I have a QD mount there. I don't know if I really would like that, but I might well, do you ever, my stock. Did you ever get that one in Bam's gear, the Troy mount that goes yeah. on the back? It's it's separate than the end plate, and it has two QDs on, like, mm -hmm. angled. Mm -hmm. I ran that, so I have that on one of mine, and I actually don't like it. It's a little too bulky for me. I like the one that you're talking about. Yeah. I don't With, like mine because when I cinch it to my body, my stock is, like, way up here, like oh, – I see. Okay. In my face, I'm, I might put it at the end of my stock, but I run that McLean sling and yep. I love that thing, man. Yeah, same I here. So, I love that. Yep, thing. we're uh, I think we're all fans of the McLean. I don't, Cody, do you got one? I know Walsh does. No, I have two. I, no, I have a blue alpha gear. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blue alpha and a magpool. <laughs> yeah, I have a magpool one that mine's terrible. Mine, there's, no, there's I mean, a, you have one, Cody? Yeah, so I mean, that okay. was. That was my go-to forever and until Joe brings up the, the best scenario ever. Like, go ahead and drop that in transition and see where it goes. That, that'll, that's a self-correcting problem right away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, I got that blue alpha gear one. And like Misfit's saying, I do have that one point all the way up, you know, as far as possible. But then I have it. I have the back strap ran through uh, the buttstock. So yeah, when I do drop it, it slides to the, the right. Thing. Yeah. It slides to my right instead of in between my legs. So uh, Harry says, what's saying McLean? It's McLean. I just uh, I dropped the link in the comments. McLeanCoreUSA.com. Do but we, not, Cody do we has, have a discount? I think we do have a discount. Let me, let me check. Yeah. Man, Joe's getting brave bringing out. Huh? I got yelled at once for having having my toys out. Yeah, I'm disassembling this, so it's not a firearm. Disassemble. <laughs> no, disassemble. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> everybody everybody watching that too young to know what movie that is. Yeah. I love that movie. Just like just like the beer question the other week. Okay, look. For YouTube, I'll even take it down even further. This is not a firearm. It has no serial number or anything on it. So, let's see. That's a 16-inch handguard, I think. If you can see the whole thing. This is where my QD mount is. About roughly 4 inches from the end of the handguard. Mm -hmm. So, there's, there, there's the QD mount. There's the actual front. So yeah, pretty far down, down the handguard. Yeah. Depending on how big of a handguard you have, you might even want to run it on the the very end of it. So, what kind of sling are you running there, Misfit? Okay. What do you say? Harry has a VTAC. Uh, I've never used one. Is that similar to the Blue Alpha? I, yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. I know there's there's all those ones that. Like their name is something else, but a different company makes them, and I always get confused yeah. on which is which. There's several. Uh, and, and in that case, that is a, you know, having that QD, yep, having that QD way up front and having it, you know, kind of slung on your uh, buttstock is the best way because when you sling it and you, and you pull all that extra in and you, or you sling it to your back, you know, you want to have, you want to, it to be able to go around your kit, right? So yeah. those two points on your gun being as far away as possible is is what you're looking for. Because once you once you tighten and cinch all that up, you want it to still still be able to swing around your body. Yeah, the, so, yeah. The one thing that I write, whatever sling you get, uh, Harry or Misfit. So practice with it. I'd say without your kit and with your kit. 
yeah. and see how comfortable it is. And transition. Like, yeah, like definitely Joe's transition. Saying. So there's transition a, from your rifle to your pistol and see where that rifle goes when you yeah. drop it. Yeah. Or you have to guide it down. I mean, I run a on my on my kit on when we're deployed and stuff, Cody, I think you ran the same thing. I ran a wolf hook the whole time. Yeah. Which yeah. is just a single point. If you let that go, it's going right into the jewels. But yeah. If I have to let that's that the go, easiest I think, for truck mounted stuff. Yeah. And but yeah. you just guide it down when you're yeah. when you're drawing with your other hand. And I like yeah. to think that if I'm half in a transition, like I'm in a no joke, no holes barge firefight, I'm my adrenaline gonna save me from hitting myself in the jewels. Yeah. I still have barely I feel it. I still have my admin pouch. I, I don't know why I don't bring it in here from that kit that I wore in Afghanistan. And it still has this, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's like a mission something sling. So I had the wolf hook uh -huh. and then I had a mission sling in here. So if I had to sling it for a long time, I'd yep. put that sling on it. Yep. Uh, I did the that same was, thing only with the mag pool. Yeah. That sling was like, I don't know how thick it is. Probably like maybe an inch. And it's super thin and like razor sharp. So like one day I I put it on and it was like just hacking at my <laughs> my neck. I was like I'm getting rid of this, but it's hey, still in that pouch, the top of the pouch. I will say this: I don't know what sling that you have, but I can almost guarantee you, uh, we have a discount code for them. Go to our website to find it. But if you look up the McLean sling, I I would be willing to bet it's an upgrade. The only thing yeah, that Jason. I don't like about that sling is when it is in the two point, it has a strap that runs the whole length. So yeah. your bolt catch bolt release is it go over top of that. Yeah. So he says, I figured out today I need to adjust the QD when working on transitions. I couldn't get it tight enough to my body. So the thing that I like about the McLean is most of most of the other ones, when you when you tighten it, you're pulling it away from your body. Is that right? Yeah, you pull it away from your body. With the McLean, you kind of pull it back towards your body. Mm -hmm. I feel like you could just get it really tight to your body. Yep. The McLean yeah. sling is amazing. And the, the two-point the two point to one-point transition is like no other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you can it. have it completely slung and tightened down against your body where it's not moving an inch. Have both hands free, and I can go from that configuration to being – on target and shooting round in a second literally a second you reach down you you pull towards you you jerk away and you raise the gun like that's all you have to do it's amazing i don't yeah, know it's a lot different yeah. than transitioning from the like the magpul if you want to transition from single to double you're undoing it you got to reconnect it reconnect reclip yeah this is so literally the, pull away pull towards i put the towards, uh, pull away. the link and the discount code in the chat you're awesome, Jason. You're on top of stuff today. And I'm pretty sure that I think Braden has, or I'm sorry, Walsh has a uh, a YouTube video out there on that sling. And, so. and then I did that one. Uh, we Remember we did that competition? We were giving away one of these slings, and all somebody had to do was send in yeah. a video on yeah. why they needed a sling. And like Nothing. weeks went by, we never got a video. <laughs> so I did one in this room down in my basement Why we? why I needed one. So I won the competition, but I never got it from Walsh. Yeah. <laughs> and then John Lovell has several uh, YouTube videos on the Blue Alpha Gear sling. Yeah. So that's I dropped, the, I dropped that's a link the... for Walsh's YouTube review in the description or in the comments as well. Man, that's one of the fat. hidden secrets, man. I don't know why yeah. nobody on top of that McLean sling. I mean, their their marketing kind of sucks. They just have gun bunny walking around with a sling it that sucks that doesn't tell me anything but um i don't know why Where, it's not bigger than it actually is they have gun bunnies yeah dude that's that. when, when i was looking into mclean's so like that's all they had what it was gun, just bunnies, gun bunnies i'm gonna sell my <laughs> sling right now and go buy some right. clean no nah, let's get another one yeah and they're not bad i mean they're they're kind of pricey i think they're like 70 bucks 60 bucks with their discount don't quote me on that but, yeah, but they haven't done anything like marketing wise. They haven't done anything in since COVID started, like February twenty twenty. So mm -hmm. they've kind of dropped off the face of the earth. It seems like, but they're still producing great slings. Like I said, I have 
I think I had three and I gave one to a buddy of mine, but I still have two. I was even showing another friend of mine the, the sling and he was just same thing. Yeah. Mesfa says marketing pushes the gun world more than anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I showed uh Sean from We Like Shooting, which this that's his livelihood in gun stuff, and he had never even heard of them. And I showed him what I had and he's like, That's actually amazing. And I'm like, Yeah, man, I don't know why it's not bigger than it is, but hey, it's a good kept secret for us. If yeah. they were selling them like hotcakes, they'd probably sell them for one fifty, so right. Yeah, get it while you can. Yep. Before prices go up. Oh my I just realized, man, we're at an hour. Holy cow. Yeah. That was great questions. I, yeah. And we only talked about that optic, that one optic. See what we were talking about, guys? Because pushes all, all over the place. We love it. Yeah. I've been on your point, Jason, I've been clearing my house a lot more ever since I've been watching that YouTube channel. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Joe Joe started watching this guy on YouTube named Mr. Ballin. He was a re, uh, medically separated Navy SEAL. The dude's the dude's just a fantastic storyteller. But it's kind of into like mysterious and supernatural and, mysterious. and uh, yeah. paranormal. And there's some times, man, I've been watching those videos, and it's like I don't know if I told Joe this. So Joe sent me a clip, and he was just like, "Dude, this video freaked me out." And I remember watching it. Same thing. I was like, "Hair stand on the back of my neck," type of things. And the next morning, it was like three in the morning. I sat bolt upright in my bed, and I'm hair standing up. If I had the sensation that someone was watching me, and I'm like looking around my room, Janelle's sleeping next to me, kids are sleeping. Like I don't hear anyone crying, but my heart rate was going so so fast, man. There's no way I'm going back to sleep after that. I was up yeah. like three thirty in the morning. Yep. My wife laughs at me, man. Like literally laughs out loud. Can I have to go down into the basement and then like, oh, let me grab my pistol with a light on it. Let me let like, me find it, Misfit. Misfit asked, what what channel is it? It's called Mr. Ballin, but I'll put it. Yeah, link it's in B my... Allen. It's M R oh, B Allen. Yeah, it's M R B A L L E N. It's the dude's a dude. I'm telling you, Misfit, you're going to. You're gonna go into the, it's like black rifle. It's a dark disease. hole, man. You're gonna it's you're a, gonna freak dark hole. You're gonna watch the first one and you're gonna be like, what the heck? So yep. he's just oh, that, such hey, a great Harry, storyteller. Harry watches yeah. his videos. Nice. If you're a fan yeah, of Harry, dark, I've been Chris, yeah, I've been uh I've been watching it for I don't know about two or three weeks now and I've gotten a lot better at clearing my house. Yeah, everywhere that I go. <laughs> Joe's watched all of his videos in two or three weeks. <laughs> he's he's just a fantastic storyteller. Yeah. And he always has that little funny quip at the beginning. Like, so if you're a fan of that, why don't you take the like button out yeah. on a date and, buy, and then yeah. and buy her the most expensive stuff and then leave her high and dry and make her pay for it. Yep. It's pretty clever. I like yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But. Yep. We got you, Harry. Yeah, we didn't even get to talk about rifle calibers. Maybe we'll save that for next week. Yeah, but I, I love the I love the questions. Keep them coming, Misfit. We yep. we enjoy that stuff. Yeah, hopefully hopefully we help you a little bit. Uh, if nothing else, we show you that everybody's thoughts are different. <laughs> and Although Joe we said did this. all agree it with nine mil. Yeah, but Joe Joe mentioned this last time. Like, don't take our word for it. You know, it's. If if there's something like we I I myself I love the McLean sling Walsh raves about it Joe likes it um, if you if you don't like it yeah you know, sorry man I mean it's not it's not for everybody so take it with a grain of salt that we're just three guys that we've enjoyed that product and uh, we were able to get a discount code for our viewers it's uh, just take it for what it's worth. And I only like it because I had the problem with a single point wolf hook or the, I don't like it, the piece of crap uh, two, magpul sling, two, point, two yeah. point into one point that doesn't even work and then it dangling and hitting you in your Yeah, I meant tool. to say, so I have a video that's going to be coming out probably in a month or two. I was out doing transitions with my Celtic Sub 2000 mm -hmm. and I have a magpul sling on it just because it's, it's the only sling that I had available for that. And so... I, I didn't guide it down. I kind of, from shooting, I kind of threw it to the side 
so I can draw my pistol and that the one point connection popped off, man, that gun just landed on the ground. So I'm, I have my camera set up. It's definitely <laughs> going to be a blooper. I have my camera set up. You filming just it. throw the gun behind just, you. I basically just threw the gun on the ground and I, I draw like, so it's all in one motion. I'm throwing this gun. I draw my pistol and the, I hear the gun hit the ground. I feel the weight off my body. I look down at it and I go, stupid sling, you know, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> So yeah, it's not a good like sling. For, I hate that. Gloves. I, yeah, I, I hate that sling, man. That's why uh, I like the McLean sling so much. <laughs> because I dealt with exactly what Jason just said. So I was on land nav with my. I was on land nav. I I took my magpul sling so then I could just sling my rifle. You have to carry your rifle. They don't say how you have to carry it. Yeah. So I slung it on my back, barrel down, slung it on my back, and I'm just just you know, straight line in it. I'm like, Cody, I don't, I don't box around stuff on land nav. I go through it like, Oh, a <laughs> crazy thorn bush. I'm going through it. Um, and all of a sudden, just like you, Jason, I felt all the weight leave, you know, you're in full kit and everything. I felt the weight, weight of the rifle leave. And I look back and my, my AR is sticking out of the mud, just like this barrel. It, the buried, it buried the whole barrel into the mud oh, crap. because the sling released. And I'm yeah. like, man, and I don't just walk in doing land nav if you're trying to run and stuff. Uh, nope. No thanks. Nope. That's why I did the wolf hook. It's a mechanical connection that doesn't – it won't yeah. fail unless it gets shot there. Yep. But – Yeah, well, when you mentioned that, that's the reason why I bought mine before my deployment. Yeah. Well, that's that, what I used. But but in that scenario, I always had my hands on my gun at all times. But there was one time where we came up on a, a weapon cache. I, I can't even call it a weapon cache. It was – a whole bunch of really big rounds. I don't even know what round these things were for. It, it's not like artillery, right? But it's it's definitely two to three times the size of a 50 cal round um, that had been stashed in here, and the villagers were all happy that they told us about it. Just so we put Russian it on rocket. Yeah, we put it on a stretcher, and in that scenario, trying to carry a stretcher with my rifle only in a wolf hook, it just kept bouncing into my knees and into my groin, like that. That, that sucked. That sucked. Yep. It's like water. Ready to have that clean. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, we had we had the hump thing how I don't know about two miles on a stretcher. Yeah. Yeah. What they do with those is they set them up in like a little ditch and they mm -hmm. kind of think they kind of aim them and they just Yeah, but they are they look like actual bullets. Yeah. Like yeah. actual rounds. But they're like two or three the si times the size of it was like for anti aircraft maybe. Yeah. It's like, like it's big a big Chuck gun. Honda. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. They weren't linked or anything, and they were mixed with a whole bunch of like horse manure. Awesome. Good times. But hey, we got to blow them up with the OD. So, yeah. Yep. All right, guys. So we're about a min an hour and 10 minutes into it. So let's go around. Yeah. Let's uh, close this out. Cody, what do you think? Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. I mean, Coming up, everybody know what I have coming up. I still have to shoot plates. I still have to shoot a scope. I still have to shoot out to a thousand yards. I'll get to it. Coops. Coops Coop says it. hi, guys. Hope all is well. Hope all are well. Hi, Coops from Facebook. How are we looking? How are we coming across on Facebook? Hopefully, well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I won't get any of that done before next Thursday. So, don't yeah. hold your breath. And I, I forgot what Walsh has for this this upcoming week. He bought he bought that flashlight. I hope he does something with that. What? Yeah, because we're always talking about it's LA flashlight? Police Gear brand. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. We're the always one that talking has about that Olight and that yeah that we yeah. can never find anything that comparable to Olight for the price. And it's you know that purple Barney flashlight that yeah, it's called Walsh the has. Right. Yeah, the the ninety degree angle, the little one that he keeps showing in all of our videos, it's it's that exact thing, only through LA Police Gear for cheaper, and we have a discount code for LA Police Gear. Yeah. So we did find you guys another flashlight that we like is rechargeable. It's 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 just a rebranded. It's made in the same factory in Holight, just a different brand. Oh, we don't know um, for sure. Walsh just said he, he's yes. like. He's pretty yeah. sure that they're made in the same factory. Yeah, I'm guessing here, but it's almost identical. It's rechargeable. It uses magnetics to recharge it. The whole nine yards. It's cheaper, and we can save you money with a with a discount code. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I don't, I don't know if that's going to be his, if that's going to be his video this week. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah, but you guys he's all, kinda, will know when he does it on Sunday. Yeah. He's kind of out of pocket and calms dark right now, but when he gets back, we'll, we'll figure out what's going on. And then I have a, I'm going to be doing a, a belt review the week after that. I guess we can talk more about that next week, but uh gray ghost gear. So I have my duty belt that was issued to me, which is, a, a typical cop duty belt where you need keepers and stuff on it. So then I went out and I bought a gray ghost gear belt. Um, oh, Coop says all good on Fox shop. Bravo. Just bought myself a Lee Enfield Mark four. Awesome, man. Got Ooh. some cord -eyed ammo, old school. That's awesome. Wow. That's There's a great cool. video that Iraq veteran 8888 does. I don't remember if it's on Mark four, but he shows it pulling out of the bag and all the, what do they call it? The Cosmoline, all uh -huh. that like grease and stuff on it and him cleaning it up. Came out really nice. Yeah. So great, uh, great ghost gear belt. Honestly, I, I didn't like it. And I was talking to Walsh about it, like, I, you know, man, I, I'm going to do this review and basically just like blast this belt because it's just, there's so many problems with it. Well, they came out with a version two and they said, hold off. We'll send you the version two. And you can compare version one with version two. And honestly, a lot of the problems that I had with version one, they fixed in version two. Not everything, but enough that I'd say, I mean, it's going to be a belt that I'm going to be trusting uh, for my work. Right. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Awesome. One thing, Coops, love the flag on your, on your uh, profile there. It's awesome. Yeah, look at Thank that. Yeah. It's like a British thin green line British flag. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. You're, you're part of the family. Welcome. Yeah, I've been I've been I've been watching a lot of YouTube, and there's this uh, there's this Marine. This uh, what is he? He was a Royal Marine, I think. Yeah, I know he was definitely a British Marine, and he doing all the video on like he's just taking other people on video and talking over them, and it's like a video on. You know, if can somebody invade the U.S. or what? Who would oh, okay. win U.S. versus China and stuff? And he keeps talking over it, and I love that dude. And it it actually brought up an idea to me, or made me realize something. So, in all the branches of the military, it's kind of like your siblings, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can talk trash to all your siblings, but if somebody that not in the family talks trash about your sibling, that fighting words, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. The Air Force, the Army, the Navy, the Marine, now the Space Force, right? We all bust on each other because that's just fun. And I started thinking about this uh, this British guy, and it's like, holy cow, we, we do the same thing with, with England. You know, it, when, when we take trips over to England and all kinds of stuff, it's like, hey, are you going to do this? Hell no, I'm not going to do that. Well, what what if they have a problem with that? It's like, uh, have you not – did you not read – a history book 1776 i don't care if they have a problem with it you know and we just we go back and forth with with england too you know with our british counterparts i've served with them they're awesome but we go back and forth we tease them just like the rest of the services it's like they're just another one of the brother and sisters it's awesome yeah same with the aussies ever, don't do they're crazy i was just gonna say so the aussies had did you guys ever go to led and you see the aussies had their own like bar right off the right next to the bra Mm -hmm. You guys remember the bra? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys remember that? I don't know if it was there when you guys were there. The Aussies yeah. and the Brits had their own little. Yeah. Only yeah. passed through there a couple times. I back in my there. back in my previous job in vehicle maintenance, I was at Kirkuk, Iraq, okay. and the Aussie came over there having a problem with their suburban. They didn't have any any support, so they brought them over to us. We were like, "Of course, we'll help you out." And we thought they were just like running around base. Suburbans, you know, they're mm -hmm. soft skinned suburbans. They're regular. You went down to Chevy and bought a suburban. No, they're taking them off base. They're doing OTW in Kirkuk, dude. Yeah. And this was in like 2004, 2005 timeframe. I open up the door. They just crudely, you know, cut out at a quarter inch plate metal and bolted it to all the doors. And then quarter inch plate behind the headrest, duct taped it to the headrest. And then put one on the back hatch. That's how they're running OTW machines. In Kirkuk, Iraq. Too. Those those yeah. dudes are nuts. They tried to pay us some booze. We we couldn't accept it. But same thing with awesome. the poles and the checks. All those love them all. Yep. Yeah. all they're all great. Yep. 
Even we the make Germans, fun of you I mean, guys. Had... You guys make fun of us, but yeah. believe you me, if uh, if China starts making fun of you, I'm gonna fuck them up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Misfit says that's janky. Yeah, but hey, they're they're running OTW. Yeah. Golly, man, that's nuts. Yeah. Duct tape to the headrest, man. Yeah, we put extra anyway. love and care in fixing their stuff. <laughs> good old, good old war stories. You know. Coop says, oh, unfortunately, that flag was for my friend. His dad was killed as a paramedic, four shifts left in his life before he retired. He was killed by an object hitting his ambulance. Uh, Golly, man. man. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, tell your friends sorry for their loss. And Yeah. So my, you know, real quick story, not to one-up your story, but my sister was a paramedic and driving an ambulance, and somebody hit her so hard that it knocked the engine out of – it was like, I don't remember, one of the – I don't know, like Forge. a Volvo. It was a Ford. Big, yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Anyway, it knocked the engine out. Of, uh, she's, you know, she didn't pass or anything, but she's she's still having back problems. But as a horrible uh, situation, brother, and we're we're sorry That's to hear that. That's a tough job, man. I yeah. I couldn't imagine being a paramedic or a coroner. Like I've throughout our jobs, I've seen enough death in my life. I could right. not see that on a nightly basis, on a daily basis. Yeah. Hats off to you for your support to them, and hats hats off to them. Yeah, yeah. Let them know that we're thinking about them. Mm-hmm. All the time. What All right, guys. That's it. Yeah. All right, boys uh, and girls. Appreciate, well, we appreciate you y'all coming. Us. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, Cody. Go ahead. Okay. So we appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, Hey, welcome, Coop. I hope you hope you subscribe and come back next week. We'd love to chit chat with you some more. Thirty we years, good your, for you, Coop. We appreciate your service, man. Thank you. Yep. But uh, yeah. If you guys, you know, you guys are our OGs. Uh, we we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next next Thursday. Uh, if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to uh, Thin Line Defense. And uh, we'll see you next week. We appreciate you guys. Love you. Take care. Be safe. See you guys.